Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop. Today is Monday, October 7th, and wow, we have a major hurricane by the name of Milton in the southern Gulf of Mexico. Are you sitting down? The winds right now are up to 175 miles per hour amazing strong category five a weak category five is a devastating storm we now have a strong category five storm in the gulf of mexico as a matter of fact uh, the pressure has just dropped down to 911 millibars. What does that mean? Well, in inches of mercury, uh, that is 26.9 uh, inches of mercury. And some of the uh, uh, deepest storms or the most intense storms in, in the uh, modern history and in history in the Gulf of Mexico, back in 2005, there were two storms that had tremendously uh, intense uh, storms. Wilma was one of them in October of uh, 2005. Its central pressure dropped down to 882 millibars. That is the lowest barometric pressure measured in the Gulf of Mexico. That's 2605 inches of mercury uh, on the uh, uh, barometer. And uh, Hurricane Gilbert, I remember Gilbert very well. Uh, that storm uh, filled the entire Gulf of Mexico at one time, but it back in 1988 and it dropped to 888 millibars. Uh, or 26.22 inches of mercury. And our current storm is uh, currently sitting at 911 millibars. It could deepen even more, but then that's about it. It can't get much stronger than that. All right, with that being said, uh, we still have the aftermath, uh, aftermath and the uh, uh, wake of Hurricane Helene from two weeks ago, uh, but the pressure is finally being restored uh, basically to all our counties in Georgia and into Western South Carolina. Still some scattered outages, but as you can see, uh, the power is being restored. What about this storm? How is it going to be affecting our area of Georgia and South Carolina? And what's going to happen across the peninsula of Florida? Let's take a look, first of all, from the National Hurricane Center. Here are the maps right now, the forecast, and that's uh, showing all the activity going on in the tropical Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea. We have some activity out in the far eastern Atlantic Ocean, not expecting any issues whatsoever with that. A little weak trough of low pressure could form a subtropical low to the east of the Bahamas, Bahamas uh, to the northeast of the Bahamas uh, and toward the Bermuda area. But again, not expecting too much out of that. But here we have Hurricane Milton over here in the uh, Gulf of Mexico right now. And the winds are at 175 miles an hour. Incredibly strong. The storm is forecast to uh, skirt just to the north of the Yucatan of Mexico. And then as a Category 4 storm remaining very strong, uh, moving into the east southeastern Gulf of Mexico. And then moving toward the Midwest coast of the peninsula of Florida in and around the Tampa, St. Peter, Petersburg, Clearwater area, Sarasota region as a still major hurricane. Don't let it fool you by the fact that it drops down from a category five to a category three. A category three storm is extremely dangerous. All right. And then from there, it moves off across central Florida, right over Disney World, Orlando, going over toward the uh, uh, Cape Canaveral area, Titusville, uh, Melbourne, uh, St. Augustine, Daytona Beach, uh, and then moving out to sea. Will it skirt across into portions of southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina? Most likely not, but I'm going to take a look just a little bit more at that. All right, let's take a look at the um, uh, radar from across the southeast and a couple of features out here I want to look at. First of all, we had this trough of low pressure stationary front. That's been, been the focus for a lot of rain across portions of Florida, the Florida Peninsula particularly. And then here you have that massive hurricane. Well, massive in strength, but it's rather compact at this time. It's not as large as uh, Helene was. Helene was a very large storm with a uh, wind field of about uh, 350 to 380 miles of tropical storm winds away from the center. This one at its max might get it to be about 150 miles an hour, uh, uh, excuse me, 150 miles uh, from the center of the storm of tropical storm force winds at 39 miles an hour. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then this front up here across uh, northwestern Georgia, now in extreme northwest South Carolina, that is going to, what's probably going to protect 
Georgia, and South Carolina. As this front advances southward, it's going to put a force on the hurricane uh, to keep it going eastward instead of northeastward. Now, it will be going northeastward as it moves across the Gulf of Mexico, but then turns eastward again as the forces from this front push it away from Georgia and South Carolina out into the Atlantic Ocean. All right, let's take a look at the uh, conditions right now. Uh, uh, from my website. First of all, let's go to the GOES East satellite. There is the storm right now with a well defined eye, 175 mile per hour winds, no telling what the gusts are, probably around 200 miles an hour. Uh, but you can see a, a strong um, circulation center around that. You got some good outflow going in. Uh, but some shear is going to start developing as the storm gets into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and that will help slowly start weakening the storm. Let's take a look at the infrared satellite image because this, this is amazing here. It shows you how intense this storm is. This white area here, that's uh, 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 cloud top temperatures around 80 below zero Celsius. That's about, what, 110, I think, somewhere around there, Fahrenheit. Very cold cloud tops. And cold cloud tops... Uh, have a relationship between the, the intensity of the storm. The, the, the colder the tops, the more intense the storm. And you have it a very intense storm. Some of these cloud tops here are 90 below zero uh, uh, Celsius. All right, let's go into the... Uh, I want to show you the, quickly the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale and barometric pressure scale and storm surge. Talking about category one, two, three, four, and five. Here, right now, it's at a category five. Uh, that's winds of 157 to 200 miles per hour. And the barometric pressure values of nine. Um, 19 down to 879 uh, millibars. And again, as I mentioned, it's down to 911 right now uh, millibars. And uh, uh, there it is in inches. And it can produce a storm surge uh, in excess of 18 feet. And that's um, would be if it was at that strength when it reaches Florida, but it won't be quite so strong, but still it's going to be quite devastating. And again, here's the fuel supply. Uh, once again, the uh, temperatures in the uh, Gulf of Mexico at this time are in the upper 20s and lower 30s Celsius. That's basically in the middle 80s. And really all you need is 75 to 80 uh, degree temperatures uh, for a hurricane to thrive upon. And the higher the temperature, it's like gasoline. The higher the octane, the hotter it burns. And the same thing with the uh, water temperature. Uh, the higher the water temperature, the more energy the storm has to deal used uh, to uh, create its uh, devastating winds. All right, looking at the uh, forecast models from the uh, Tropical Tidbits, uh, this shows the track, basically all the models basically agreeing on where this storm is going to go. Um, and, it, and it definitely shows it's most likely going to be moving across uh, the central portion of the Florida Peninsula. And a few models have it going a little bit further north, and a couple have it going a little bit further south. So we'll keep an eye on that. But if it goes a little bit further north, that's where I'm con uh, concerned about because that then could affect areas of southeastern Georgia and South Carolina, which most of my viewers uh, are viewing from or are concerned about. All right, let's take a look at some of the uh, uh, rainfall expectations from this storm. And right now, this is the ECM... ECMWF, that's the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, uh, and it's showing quite a bit of rain forecast potential for uh, the uh, Florida Peninsula. And here you have, look at some of these values, 7, 8 inches of rain, 8, 9, 10 inches, maybe in some areas 13, or I mean or rather 11 inches of rain, there it is right there, near the coast just to the north of, that's around Cedar Key I think, uh, and around the Tampa area, uh, 4 to 5 inches, 6 inches, and so forth. And then going up to the Jacksonville area, again about 12 to 13 inches of potential rainfall expected from that. What about southeastern Georgia over here in Glen County, Brunswick, St. Simons, Jekyll, uh, expect possibility of two inches of rain up in the Savannah area, about an inch and a half uh, to an inch of rain, perhaps in Hilton Head, uh, getting probably less than an inch. That is if the storm stays on track with the National Hurricane Center. Well, what about uh, if it goes just a little bit further north, the, uh, the global forecast system, the, Amer the American model, is showing that if it does, this is what it would be like if it goes just a little bit further north, and it shows those uh, water values of precipitation up to five inches or so in and around the Glen County area, and then going up into the Savannah area, uh, two and a half to three inches of rain possible uh, with this storm is if, if it moves just a little bit further north. It doesn't take too much. Um, 
But the other good news behind this is the winds won't be quite as strong uh, with this uh, storm, so I'm not expecting too much out of that. Here's a closer view of the uh, rain forecast for southeastern Georgia. In around St. Mary's, you have perhaps up to 10, 11 inches of rain if it goes north. I think this is the uh, uh, GFS, yeah, GFS model, Savannah 1.9. Uh, to two inches to three inches on the south side going into uh, Bryan County, Liberty Counties all along the coast. Inland, not so much, not too much to worry about. Once you get past Interstate 95, even on the bad model forecast, it would be um, less than two inches, probably less than an inch of rain. And one other, I want to show you the, um, uh, the ECMWF on the closer view for Georgia and southern South Carolina. As you can see on Hilton Head, not much at all. Maybe a quarter of an inch, a third of an inch, Savannah about a half inch. And this is more or less what I am really expecting uh, to see around here. Um, as you go further south, yeah, you're going to get more over in the Okefenokee Swamp, perhaps two to five, uh, two to three inches of rain. Glenn County, uh, again, around two inches, maybe three inches of rain. Uh, maybe. Uh, it, it, if it goes just a little bit further south, not even that much. And the good news is most of the tropical storm force winds, that's winds of 39 miles an hour or greater, will remain east of the Georgia coast. Now, some of the winds could gust 35 to 40 miles an hour in some of the coastal counties, particularly as you go further south. You might see some uh, winds gusting up to around 45 miles an hour on Jekyll Island, St. Simons Island. Uh, uh, and Cumberland Island, uh, a little bit stronger there yet. But right now, it looks like most of those winds will be well east of, well, well east of the area and uh, in remaining over the open waters of the Atlantic. All right, going back to my website, savannapat.name. Um, there you can get the latest information from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, the power outages map, I just showed you that. That's the uh, good news. I'm expecting rain perhaps, particularly in the coastal counties, Wednesday night and Thursday morning, and then clearing off Thursday. And it might be windy Wednesday night and Thursday morning with the uh, tro uh, tropical system or hurricane Milton moving east of the coast of Florida and away from southeastern Georgia and southern South Carolina. Then comes the weekend very, very fine weather conditions. Uh, get your pumpkin pie or pumpkin spice stuff out because you're gonna have fall weather with highs in the middle 70s and lows in the middle 50s. Thanks to all those who have been supporting my channel and thank you for watching my channel and hitting the like button. I really appreciate that. That helps this channel get more and more viewers. So um, uh, please uh, feel free to share this video with your friends if you would like. and. Uh, uh, and, and again, hit the like button. Uh, that helps as well. So I'll see you again tomorrow with the latest update uh, from my area right here in Savannah, Georgia on Hurricane Milton. Thanks.